There are many different player types in NHL 24, and today we are going to be crowning a champion. I'm going to build full teams comprised of each player type, and then we will have a group stage and a knockout stage to determine a winner. Enforcers are pretty much extinct in this game, and grinders were very low in overall, so I decided to leave them out. So that we could have an even three teams per group, I had a play-in match between the next two lowest overall teams, which was the defensive defenders and the power forwards. Once the groups were set, each team played the other two squads in their group, once. If there ended up being a tie for points, then the goal differential would be the breaker. Once this stage was done, the top two teams from both groups would play each other to find out who goes on to the finals. And from there, we crown our champion. Trust me when I say you're gonna want to watch to the end of this one. Also, to keep things fair, Brian Elliott is the starting goaltender for every team. Any questions? No? Okay, good. Let's get it started. The defensive defensemen definitely don't look like the biggest threat. Maybe they'll shut you down, but don't foresee much offense. The offensive defenders definitely have some more abilities going on here, and they really stacked up on their defense. The power forwards on the chopping block with the defensive defensemen, it's their game to lose, but they do have 50 goal scorer Zach Hyman on defense. This team just looks ridiculous. Look at all that gold. Unbelievable. Even on defense, every single player. Another deadly squad here in the Snipers. Let's see if they are able to move the puck around or if they're all selfish. Two-way forwards also looking like a force here. Maybe not as many abilities, but you know what? I do like the makeup of this squad. Last but not least, we have the two-way defenders who on paper look like the best of the three defensive types. So let's see how that works out for them. We're kicking things off here with the only win and in game between the power forwards and defensive defensemen. Power forwards with a chance early as Landy finds Tuck in the slot, but Moose is up to the task and Alexiak prevents the rebound. Now five minutes left in the first, the defensive lads have their shot attempt blocked in the slot, but it is found by Manson on the doorstep to go up by one. They aren't done there as they would be the first team to strike in the second period. A nice rebound pickup by Larson to give his team the insurance marker. The Power Boys looking desperately to get back in this one and they do just that. Meyer lets go quite literally a laser beam in the slot and hits one of the most disrespectful dolphin dives I've ever seen. A bad pass from Boldy is taken away by Chris Tanev who turns on the Jets one on one with the goaltender but Moose keeps the lead to one. Time running out for the power forwards as McTavish gets by the defense but can't beat the goalie. This would seal the fate of the power forwards and the defensive defensemen qualify for the group stage. The first group stage match is between the snipers and the playmakers. Kaprizov looking like a playmaker with this great pass to Stamkos who rips it home. 1-0 for the Snipers. Bedsy with a similar approach but he goes cross ice. Svech can't get the original shot off but finds the puck again in the slot and extends the lead to two. Another lead extension by Svechnikov as he tips home a shot by Kevin Fiala. McDavid decides to take matters into his own hands with a little toe drag release breaking the ice for the playmakers. However, the snipers would answer back with a very playmaker-esque goal once again. Sveshnikov looks to add yet another goal from Fiala, but the zebra decides that this one needs to be reviewed. From the replay, it looks like Andre may have been pushed into the goalie by Reinhardt, but regardless, the final decision is no goal. This did not affect AM34, whoever, who tucks a cheeky 1-5 hole. McDavid once again putting on a show, attempting to drag his team back into this game. His efforts would fall short as who else but Kevin Fiala decides to throw one on net and after a game of Plinko, finds himself on the score sheet yet again. Deja vu from Cap as he finds Leon this time. The Snipers win their first game. Next up, we have the two-way forwards going head-to-head -head with the offensive D-men. The forwards get on the board first as Stone finds Heischer from the corner. 
It's one nothing. Defenseman strike back quick with a beautifully tipped point shot, bringing this game to an even state once again. Some solid puck movement from the two-way forwards would put them back in the lead thanks to a JT Miller one-timer. The first period excitement, not done yet. As we see a genuine Hail Mary from the defenders, Hughes gets possession and after moving the puck around, regains it only to hit the post. Forwards extend their lead by one more in the second period as Elliott gets a piece of the puck, but not enough. They also waste no time in the third, adding another tally and making this game seem out of reach. Offensive D-men not going down without a fight, however, as UK65 sends one five-hole from the slot. And not long after, Kel McCarr brings this game back within two goals with some time remaining. The fun stops there, however, with a backdoor tuck-in from Mark Stone off of the rebound. The lead is extended to three goals once again. Gerard does get a chance in the dying seconds. It's too little too late anyway, and he also doesn't score, so that double sucks. The Snipers looking for another big victory, this time over the two-way defenders. Kevin Fiala has been very good so far, and he is not done yet, sending a howitzer past Belliot. Little bit of a scare off the draw as the chicken tendy was not ready. Gonna give somebody salmonella, but Darlene squeaks one through, and Leon probably did the rest there. Drysada would make up for it in the second with a pass to Rantanen that would put his team back up by one. Again, Leon adopting the role of playmaker, dishing it off to Pasta, and this one finds a way in. Although Elliott made the initial stop, his own player kicks it in, making this now a two-goal game. McAvoy just trying to box out Kirill here, but unfortunately it backfires. The defenseman would cut the lead in half off of a short side shot from Apple Pie Triangle. Snipers, however, living up to their name as Fetch does kind of like a 90 degree clapper trick shot or something. Brelliot would make some great saves to keep that two goal lead intact for the Snipes. Now in the third, J-Rob and Pappy gonna link up to add another tally, turning this into a three-goal game. Snellyot, that's gonna be Sniper Elliot's name, making more stops, but Hedman eventually beats him and hits the dive. Fiala takes exception to that, literally walking over him as his team advances to 2-0. For the first time, we have two defensive teams squaring off. We start with a good chance for Larson down low early on, but not able to squeeze that by. They would have yet another chance, but Pedersen shows us why they are listed as defensive with that stunning one-timer attempt. The first strike comes at the hands of Cam York for the offensive defenders as his shot was kerfuffled by Deliot, eventually finding a way to cross the line. However, off the ensuing draw, the defensive boys answer the bell as Manson throws a low one towards the net, and just like that, we are even Steven. Stamkos. In the dying seconds, Matheson's shot is rebounded out to Samuel Girard, and they take the lead back. Now in the second, a clearing attempt is pursued by Tanev, who finds his second breakaway of the tournament and, well, fails again. Alexiak is then given a great opportunity to tie this contest, but he too is wrong. Now this is ridiculous. A huge point shot is tipped outstandingly by Gostisbehere, who then celebrates without even seeing it go in. Talk about confidence. The defensive boys aren't done yet as Anderson shoots for a rebound and he gets one. Right onto the stick of Adam Larson, lead is cut down to one. 
And with just three minutes left, they reply with a tipped point shot of their own. We need overtime for this one. Unfortunately, the defensive defender's efforts were slightly in vain as Captain Kale closes this one out, but they did still earn one point from it. With the snipers already in, this game determines who makes it out of the group stage. Playmakers get on the board first from a super unfortunate poke check attempt by the netminder and Malkin shows no respect throwing his stick away. Just over a minute later, face off in the defender's zone, draw one cleanly by Eichel back to Barzal and he puts it top corner to nothing. The defenders would minimize the gap before the period ends as Sergachev gets in behind the playmakers and tucks it backhand. As soon as the second period gets underway, a great opportunity arises to tie this game, but Pelliot makes an equally great save. Another chance for the 2A defenders later in the period. Pai Trangolito's shot attempt is blocked, but that sets up Jacob for the tying goal, all square going into three. First good attack in the third goes to the playmakers off a huge one-timer, but the save is made, keeping it tied. Then, with just under five minutes left, Sergachev receives a pass from Riley and buries it. The two-way defenders will go on to face the snipers for the Group A chip. Another pivotal matchup. This time, it's the defensive boys against the two-way forwards. Not much action out of the gate, but the first real chance comes from the two-way forward squadron as Deliot gets put to work and manages to keep the puck out of the net. Defenders send the forwards to a power play and they would regret it after some puck movement Captain America gets a chance between the hash marks and breaks the ice. Pavelski, back at it again with the white vans, has two defenders chasing him down but he spins them off and finds Petey for the insurance marker. Not long after, a phenomenal forearm, I mean pass, from Marcasro Stone springs JT Miller, but Delia keeps this game within reach. Some four on four action in the third period. Carlo with a pass to the middle, but the one-timer is stopped by Telliot. Time is now the enemy of the defensive boys, but they bring it back to within one as Alexiak buries a goal. Still a minute 30 remaining. Net empty, the pressure is being cranked up, but in this case, pressure created a diamond because Telliot did not allow this game to slip away for the two-way forwards, who would add an empty netter and seal the fate of the defensive defenseman. It's time to crown a Group A champion, Snipers versus two-way defenders. Fiala with a chance just over five minutes into this one, but he is turned away. Another chance to gain the lead here for the Snipers as Connor gets behind the defenders, but not able to get a good shot off. Now early in the second, Taves able to avoid a hit from Zabenejad. His original shot is blocked, but it finds its way back to him, and this time he finishes the job. Two-way defenders wanting to extend that lead, which I mean, yeah. The snipers are pretty good at scoring, so that checks out. Shea Theodore finds the back of the net. J-Rob has a chance to cut the lead in half from a Fiala dish, but he would be turned away as well. Power play just expiring for the defenders, but they have a two-on-two. Again, we see an initial shot block that results in an immediate goal after. Things just continue to pile on in the third. Nice passing play from the defenders and a weak shot is tossed towards the net that leads to an easy goal for Pringolo. Finishing this cake with some icing, Rasmus Dahlin and John Carlson link up to make this a 5-0 victory. The defenders with the upset move on to the final. Let's determine the Group B winner, two-way forwards versus offensive D-men. 
two-way forwards grinding it out in the offensive zone. Small dish off to Phillips should be a capital Forsberg for the very early lead. Back on the attack again. Defenders struggling to stop these guys, but the post sure isn't. Puck meets Irene, keeping it 1-0. Pressure continues as the Rat gains the line with an unnecessary deke. Initial save is made, but then Elliot checks into an all-inclusive as he's stuck on an island. Defenders need to get something going here, and they get very close as Ghost drills the upright, and Hamilton does a front flip after failing to control the rebound. More from the two-way forwards in the second. Suzuki would be located, streaking in, and he extends this lead even further. It's now 3-0. It remains all forwards in this game. Aho has his shot saved from the point, but Philip Forsberg scores his second of the contest with an absolute muffin of a backhander. Goaltender cannot be letting those in. It took nearly 60 minutes of play, but they finally managed to get rid of the goose egg as Gustafson beats Elliott blocker side. The final game will be a battle of the two ways as the forwards take on the defenders. The game for all the marbles. Two-way forwards versus two-way defenders. Early chance for the D-men as Charmack has two players chasing him. Taves' shot is turned aside. Dunn spins, finds Hedman, who walks in and a bit of a scramble ensues, but still no goals yet. All defenders in this first period as they get another chance in the final minute. Darlene on the doorstep is rejected all square after one. Rasmus looking for revenge at the kickoff of the second period, but again the netminder has his number. If you can't beat him... Pass it off is the motto here as Yossi accepts a Darlene dish and gets his team on the board. Forward's now down a man. He sure is clearing attempt, hits his teammate, and Miro delivers an unbelievable pass to Dunn for the easy tap-in two-goal lead. In the third, forward starting to get desperate. Marshy goes down low, finds JT Miller who fires a shot, but no dice cracking the code yet. Then they move the puck around like they're doing some kind of challenge. Two minutes left, probably not a good idea. Slapshot is saved. Yossi completely rails one towards the empty net and misses violently. It looks to be too late for the forwards, who can't get the puck out. Mori scoops it up, and this game is as good as done. The two-way defenders are your champions. I decided to give the Glasgow Grinders a shot at glory, just for fun. They are the lowest overall team and the only team sub-80. The Grit Grinders making their debut against the champions. Rather boring first period until near the end where Perry sends the puck over to Captain Felino and he gives the Grinders a 1-0 lead. Moving on to the second, we have Riley enter the zone along the boards, puts it on the stick of Vince Dunn, who slams it home. We are tied after two. A close call for the grinders to start the third as Felino is spotted by Goudreau. Elliot makes the save, and the puck chills in the crease for a minute, but eventually is cleared. Then with 20 seconds left, Delorier sends in a point shot that bounces off the left mini wheat of Brian straight to Captain Felino, and we see the champions immediately dethroned. Let's see what happens in this grudge match. Snipers v Grinders. Out of the gate, we're going to see an immaculate save by Elliot while flopping around on the ice. Later on in the first period, Stamkos lets a shot fly from the point and it gets tipped by the rookie, Connor Bedsy. Looks like Do Drag Release isn't his only way to score. Final minute of the period, Perry carrying it and springs Marcus Felino, who has been carrying this squad and he continues to with the tying goal. Dreisaitl didn't want Felino to be the only captain with a goal, so he answers with one of his own off a pass to rebound to regain the lead. In true grinder fashion, Garnett brings the puck wide, throws it in front, and then jumps on the scramble with Bastion. Somehow, someway, this game is tied up once again. 
Speaking of grinders doing what they do, Lemieux makes J-Rob regret taking that shot. He's slow to get up. Svetch ends up with a chance off the draw to close the game out, but he's denied. We need extra minutes. In the extra frame, Captain Felino further exemplifying his leadership and just working hard out there. Has his shot saved, but Tanner Janot's shot is not saved. We have a new, undisputed champion, the Grinders.